Hello, my friends. Will Mitchell from Startup Rose here. And today we're talking about a hairy subject. We're talking about addiction. And one thing I've learned and you'll probably learn as well is that everybody out there has their vice. Everybody has some addiction in this crazy, stressful world. If you're trying to go out there and achieve things and be the best version of yourself. No, I appreciate it, but I told my wife I wouldn't drink tonight. And people need a reliable way to detach and just relax and let themselves recharge for just a few hours. You know what? You know what? Give me that thing. I'll do one. I'll do one. So these addictions, these vices are not necessarily a bad thing. Now, of course, there's some very destructive addictions and vices out there. I'm telling you, this is the wrong kind of glue, Charlie. No, it's not. We want to avoid the destructive vices, and we want to go towards some of the more constructive vices. You know, some people are into meditation, or I personally go in the hot tub and read all the time. So in the best case scenario, you have vices that kind of overlap with what you're trying to do in life and build skills into your daily life as well. Well, the only thing I've ever been addicted to is a thirst for knowledge. But no matter who you are, I'd be willing to bet that at least once in your life, you've fallen victim to the stealth and most destructive addiction of all, and that is the addiction to modern media. We're drowning in more ultra high quality media than ever before. Every single year, it's becoming easier and easier for us to lose ourselves in these complex virtual realities, whether it's video games, movies, TV, sports. You'll meet people that know every single football fact ever, and they know, you know who won the Heisman Trophy back in 1962 or something. Or you'll meet people that honestly have a stronger relationship with fake TV characters than they do with their own family members. But for me personally, I have never experienced a media addiction more powerful than a video game addiction. Come on, sucker! Anyone who's gotten way too into a video game before has experienced their dreams actually blending together with the video game that they're playing. Instead of having normal dreams by your everyday life, everything starts to become imbued with elements from the video game, or worse yet, you're actually just dreaming that you're in the video game and actually strategizing on how to win and beat things. This phenomenon is absolutely fascinating to me because it shows just how powerful video games are, that they can completely hijack your brain's entire dopamine reward system to the point where your brain actually starts to optimize your life around the video game rather than your actual real life. This is a level of psychotic obsession that I have to assume was not really possible before recently. And ever since I've experienced that and noticed it, I have been on a quest to replicate that and dream about my business and my actual real life that I'm trying to develop. Some of your brain's most powerful processes like dreaming, where we don't even fully understand what's happening yet. All of these are being hijacked by media addictions. There's a great MIT study about this that says video games actually have a way of infecting your subconscious mind. So not only do you need to break free from all of these media addictions that are trapping you and holding you back. That's going to make you stupid. But you also need to learn how to use this system in your brain to your advantage, right? If you've been addicted to a video game or a TV show or a sport, you've experienced a level of productivity and work ethic and, and obsession and care that most people will never experience. So unless you're able to not only break free of these addictions, but also learn to leverage this psychotic obsession that you've uncovered, that's the only way to reach your full potential and really accomplish what you're trying to accomplish in this life. Simply abstaining from all media and not consuming any TV or any sports or anything, that's not enough because you're going to have to interact with these things. There's going to be things vying for your attention. You have to learn how to take control of your dopamine reward system and again, leverage that psychotic obsession to build your own life and your own business. So let's talk about ways that you can leverage these existing media addictions and this existing infrastructure that exists in your brain and start to trick your mind into applying it towards your actual life and business instead. The first step is to realize that life is just that. It's just a game. Life is the most challenging and complex game that there is. And one of the best things about the game of life is the massive variety in the different storylines and characters that you can pick. You can go down an academic quest line. I didn't go down that quest line. I went down a more rebellious quest line. You could be a great business person. You can be a great mother, a great athlete. But no matter what, you're going to continue to impact lives and, and have more respect for yourself as you continue to progress down your quest line. People mix and match these different quest lines and they'll switch over on a whim. That's part of the reason why this game is so dynamic and fun. But a lot of people get lost in that massive ocean of different options and potentials. So it's really important to know what game you're actually playing and what quest you're actually on. 
But getting trapped and throwing thousands of hours into a video game or a sports addiction is the equivalent of getting trapped into the tutorial stage of a game and just playing that for thousands of hours. So you've got to stop copping out of the game of life and start getting invested into it. It takes a lifetime to master, but it is the most rewarding and fulfilling game that there is. The next step is to clearly define the quests that you're on and how to accomplish those quests. How is it that a video game designer can trick you into staying up until 4 or 5 a.m. running some quest for some guy and you have trouble just forcing yourself to focus on building a business for a few hours a day? It's because the goals and rewards inside of a video game are so narrowly defined and constrained. So you know exactly what needs to be done, exactly what you're going to get out of it and how to achieve it. And you can track your progress along the way. Your brain gets trapped in this really rapid dopamine feedback loop that just doesn't exist in the natural world. So all that work that all these video game designers do to trap you inside of their video games, you have got to do that type of work on your own life and trap yourself in your own dopamine feedback loops. So start applying these video game principles to your life. What are you actually trying to accomplish? Why are you trying to accomplish it? How is the character going to change? What are the attributes or the skills that are going to improve? How is the storyline going to progress? What does 1% progression look like? What does 50% progression look like? The reason video games are so addictive is because video game designers build these dopamine feedback loops into the games and they spend a lot of time doing it. So reverse engineer that and start building these dopamine feedback loops into your own life and get really clearly defined on what it is you're actually trying to accomplish. What is the quest and what does progression look like? Once you know what your quest is and how you're going to achieve it and what progression looks like, you can start to build some simple dashboards and actually track your key metrics and your key numbers. For me personally, there is no game genre that I can get more hooked into than business and economics games. And it's really fascinating to me because what I'm doing in these games is basically just looking at little spreadsheets and you know financial statements and financial analyses and then just making decisions based on that. And in the past 10 years or so, there's definitely been points when I've been more obsessed with a business video game than my actual business that I'm building. So when I realized that, I kind of dove into it and I said, man, how is it that I get more into this fake business than my real life business? And one of the things I figured out is if I had a really simple dashboard, right, just a spreadsheet that had all of the data that's important to my business, what actually drives the growth and what actually matters. If I had all of that in a tracking system and it was reliable and I knew the data was accurate and I could make decisions on it. That's why I really get obsessed with these business video games, right? It's that rapid feedback loop. I can make a decision in the video game and see it appear on my financial statements very quickly. So that dopamine feedback loop, you have to create that in your own life. And the way I've done that and what I think is super helpful is creating really good, simple KPI dashboards, tracking systems for your key metrics, So you can have a place to see reliably what is actually happening in my business. How are my decisions actually affecting the bottom line? And then it's really easy to turn your business into a video game. Now, in terms of actually building your KPI dashboard and these automated data tracking systems, we're going to leave that for a different video. Comment below if you guys ever want to see that one. But in essence here, you just need a place to go where you can see reliably what is happening in my business and how are my decisions actually affecting the bottom line. If you can't track the outcome of the actual decisions you're making, your brain's not going to be able to get into it at all. So make sure you're able to track at least those key metrics like revenue and website traffic or YouTube views or whatever those key metrics are, make sure you track them reliably and that's going to allow your brain to see the results of your work and get really into it. Another important thing is to have milestones and force yourself to celebrate even the small wins. There's no video game designer that's programmed in strategic dopamine hits to keep you invested and hooked into real life. Another thing you've got to do while you're working on these quests is continually stop and visualize the rewards, the outcomes that you're actually working towards. Every video game has epic players that have completely mastered the mechanics of the game. They've maxed out all their gear and they are just completely at the top of this video game. Let's do this. Leroy Dragons! A lot of these guys become streamers these days, and I guess there's a lot of people that watch each other play video games. So these people that are at the top of their game and have reached their full potential, 
these people inspire a lot of motivation, right? Without those role models, without those images, those avatars of what we're working towards, it's really difficult to motivate ourselves to really reach our full potential. So it's important to know who the epic players are in your game. What does the leaderboard look like for the game you're playing right now? What about the global leaderboard? What does that look like? What's your position on the global leaderboard? Who's in the top 10? Who's 10 spots above you? What is actually going to move your leaderboard position up 10 spots? It's so easy to get motivated and addicted to this stuff because it's quantitative. You can look at the leaderboard, you can see exactly what your score is, know exactly what you need to drive that score up, and that creates that feedback loop that gets you addicted to it. So if you have gotten obsessed with any video game or sport or anything at all, you know this ungodly level of productivity and work ethic that exists inside of you. You've just got to design a few little reward systems to transform that system from something that can entrap you and damage your life to something that can empower you and fuel your life. Another thing that's going to help you as you progress in this game of life is knowing who your bad guys are and who your big bosses are going to be. Every great game or movie has a formidable set of enemies and bosses that continue to develop and get stronger right alongside our hero. So it's important for you to figure out who are the recurring kind of bad guys and enemies that are going to continue to hold you back on your road to success. Oh, well... They're bad dudes. That's why they call the game bad dudes. For instance, I saw a great blog post, which I'll link to below, where a guy basically gamified his entire life to a really in-depth degree. And one of the things he did was, you know, personified his weaknesses. Instead of feeling bad about himself when he slept in in the morning, he just personified that into Mr. Sleeps. And now the bad guy, Mr. Sleeps, is just a guy that he continually has to defeat on his road to success. So figure out what your internal weaknesses are. What are these recurring challenges that you're going to keep running into on your road to success and personify them, turn them into a bad guy and separate them from the identity that you're creating and turn them into just a bad guy that needs to be defeated. The final solution here is to actually delete all the video games and have a complete dopamine detox. Once you've gained control of your dopamine reward system again, you can go back and enjoy those things in your leisure time. But right now you have lost control of your impulses and your dopamine reward system has been completely hijacked by this external force. So the only solution here is to completely cut yourself off and force yourself to go into an actual drug withdrawal. Really what you want to do is not engage in any media addictions or any of these artificially designed reward systems. No television for a week. What? You're going to go through withdrawal for a solid 10 to 15 days where you are just not enjoying life. You're depressed, irritable, anxious. And this is because your brain is not getting the dopamine that it was formerly getting from these very addictive activities. But slowly over time, your brain is going to learn how to have fun doing these admittedly less fun and less exciting tasks like building your business or improving your life. The dopamine hits that you're getting right now from your media and substance addictions, you can absolutely get those same dopamine hits from things that actually build up your life and your business, but it just takes a lot of conscious effort and frustration and time to get there. And one quick bonus tip for any extreme addicts out there, you guys might want to check out these apps like Habatica or Habit RPG. If you are really hooked on video games, these are basically gamification systems built on top of building discipline and productive habits. So I haven't personally used these, but they seem pretty interesting and they might help some of you out there. Now, I don't want to make it sound like you can never consume any TV or any media or ever play any video games. Me personally, I still probably consume an hour or two of media every single day. You know, now I've understood that the reason why I consume this media is to detach and relax so I can go harder at the actual quests I'm trying to accomplish. And when I'm really firing on all cylinders, I can get myself dreaming about my business and actually solving big business problems and, and you know, coming up with great ideas in my sleep. So I have successfully kind of transformed that architecture, that addiction in my brain and applied it to my business. So if you have ever found yourself so hooked and addicted to a TV show or a video game that you actually start dreaming about it, here's the good news. You now know that you have within you the power to master entire universes and all of the mechanics within them. 
Now your quest is to make sure that that energy and that life force is not robbed away from you and put into some mini game. You've got to focus this psychotic level of obsession that your brain is capable of towards accomplishing things in your actual life and business. It can be intimidating, but it's the most challenging game that there is, and it's the only game worth mastering at the end of the day. Hopefully this video helps you guys take control of some of the addictions that we all have and just make sure that you are focused on the real game of life and not getting trapped in these different mini games. Give us a like on the video if it helped you. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.